Octane versus Redshift. Which is better? Let's take a look. So this is not an easy question to answer, and it's gonna depend on your situation, which one is gonna be right for you. But it's also something that can't be answered in only one video. So over the course of my upcoming projects that I'm working on, I'm going to be comparing the two render engines to give a better insight into the two using actual projects. But for this video, I wanted to take a high level look at the two and make some on paper comparisons between them, as well as outline some experience that I've had working with the two over the course of the last few years. So I have been using Redshift for a lot longer than I've been using Octane, but I have been using the two for a fairly good amount of time now, and I wanted to compare the two here. So let's look at some on paper comparisons, starting with the price. So Octane is $20 a month or $30 a month. And I say that uh, because there are two different versions. One will give you a, a GPU limit of two, where the other one will give you a higher GPU limit. Um, I don't think there even really is a GPU limit. So for 20 bucks a month or 30 bucks a month, that's billed annually. So 20 bucks for the two GPUs, 30 for the unlimited. And then, like I said, that's billed annually or it's $24 or $36 a month build monthly. Compare that to Redshift, which has just dropped its perpetual license. I should also mention the Octane. I believe it does have a perpetual license as well. It's like $700 or something like that. Redshift doesn't have that option, so I'm not even gonna compare those two. Um, you are still able to renew your uh, perpetual license if you still have a Redshift perpetual license, but that, like I said, is uh, no longer an option uh, going forward. You can't just outright buy a perpetual license. So Redshift is $22 a month if, you build, if you're built annually or $45 a month if you wanna pay monthly. So pretty even here, um, not too bad unless you're paying on a month to month basis. And in that case, Octane is obviously gonna be the better choice. If you're worried about price, then I would go with Octane in this case. So for speed, I would say the two of them are pretty equal. Um, there is a little bit of difference between the two, but on a uh, general look at the two, they're pretty equal in terms of speed. Now for the number of GPUs that they're allowed, I touched on this just a second ago, but Octane allows for two GPUs based on their uh, lower tier and then Redshift allows for eight plus. It has limit listed on their website. Not sure what that means. I don't know if it's uh, unlimited or what, but you can have more GPUs than you can stick into a computer basically. So why don't I have the other option for Octane listed? I'm comparing the two uh, baseline uh, options, I guess. So it's Redshift, it basically only has one uh, one option and then Octane has the lower tier and the higher tier, but the lower tier is more on on price comparison with what Redshift has. So that's why I'm only listing that two here. So for the fourth comparison here, we have denoising. So Octane has their Octane denoiser, which is their spectral AI denoising solution, which they, I believe, created and is all in-house stuff. And then Redshift has NVIDIA's Optics Denoiser, as well as a third-party Altus uh, Denoiser that you can choose between the two. I don't actually remember uh, using Altus for sure at any point in time. I have used the Optics Denoiser, but in my opinion, the Octane Denoiser is by far, in a way, the best. And I'll touch more on that later but Octane Denoiser for the win. So for the next comparison, let's take a look at the integration. So for Octane, it's got good integration into the different apps. It's got a ton of different choices. You can use it in pretty much any application that you can think of, but it could be better. So it's not fully implemented into all of them or it has some of the weird quirks, I should say, into, into some of them uh, that doesn't really work out uh, the best. So it could be a little bit better. As for Redshift, everything that I've used it in 
has been just a phenomenal experience. It's very, very well implemented in everything that I have used, like I said. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of my experience using the two. So for this, I wanna to touch on stability first. So stability is, is something that's needed in all programs that you're gonna be using. As you know, you don't wanna have a bunch of crashes going on when you're trying to work. It's extremely annoying. And with that, I have to say Houdini version of Octane uh, is very stable. I haven't had a crash very much, um, maybe once or twice when I've been working, but very stable. Compare that to the Cinema 4D version, which I haven't used in a year, so maybe it's uh, it's changed, but I, like I said, I used it about a year ago, and it crashed and a ton. Like, it was crashing all the time. Uh, maybe I was pushing it too hard, maybe I wasn't, I don't know. I've heard other people complain about the crashes that Octane gives them as well, but if you're using the Houdini plugin, it's really actually pretty stable. I really was not expecting that. I was expecting it to crash a lot like I had experience with before. But like I said, hopefully that has cleared itself up. And I know Octane, uh, their developers are are working on making the the application more stable. And compare that to Redshift, I can probably count on one hand the number of times that it's crashed on me. It hardly ever crashes. It's super, super stable and I would definitely give it the win in terms of stability for this one. Now for the ease of use of the two, I would say for Octane, it is very quick and it's simple to set up. It gives you a great look right off the bat. Um, doesn't take a lot of effort to get something that looks good. Compare that to Redshift and it takes a little bit more time to get a good looking result, but you also, I feel like, have a, a lot more control in terms of your settings inside of Redshift compared to Octane where you're just basically brute forcing your way through things. But like I said, it does uh, take a little bit longer to get a good result. And I would say that I generally like the look of Octane a little bit more than Redshift with, uh, with most things. You know what I'm talking about if you've seen the two renders uh, put side by side in terms of things like subsurface scattering volumes and just day-to-day -day rendering. So would give Octane the win in that regard. And then moving on to denoising. So I touched on this briefly earlier, but Octane has the Spectral AI denoiser. It's their own proprietary technology, and it is extremely, extremely good. I don't have any sort of issues like I would say that Redshift has, where it is uh, smudgy and has a, a watercolor painting type look to it. Uh, in fact, in every image that I've done over the past uh, few months here that I've rendered with Octane, and including the background image here, I've used the denoiser. And it's done great, a great job at denoising the, uh, the renders. It speeds up your render time quite a bit, and uh, you don't really have to throw a whole lot of samples at it to get a, a good looking denoise. Compare that to the Altus slash optics denoiser in Redshift. Like I said, I don't remember if I used Altus or not, um, but I know the optics denoiser, at least when I was giving it a shot, I never even used it again after I uh, gave it a few shots because it honestly just gave a really crappy look. It was nothing even close to what the the final render would actually look like so I really didn't like it and I, I didn't really use it so like I said it gives a smudgy and a watercolor painting type look to those and it's just completely unusable in my opinion moving on to low light so this is something that I discovered pretty early on when using redshift at least in the extremely low light scenarios it's very very rough at getting a good looking result. It's in some cases not even possible. And compare that to uh, Octane, it's very, very good at low light, rent, low light renders and they clean up uh, pretty decent and uh, with a uh, pretty decent speed in most cases. Like I said, with Redshift, there are certain situations where I've, I've tried to get it to clean up and there's literally no viable way it's without throwing you know 10 hours worth of render time at a single image to get it to render 
with a usable result and that's just unacceptable so low light is definitely for the win and octane or at least extremely low light cases definitely octane i would go for those if you tend to produce these kind of darker looking images or like nighttime images i would definitely uh, give octane the win in that regard and lastly procedural noise so if you know anything about the two renders here um, Redshift is owned by Maxon, and Maxon has a ton of different noises that they have in their Cinema 4D application, and they are extremely good. I loved the Cinema 4D noises when I was using them, or uh, when I was using Cinema 4D, and that's one thing that I wish I could have brought over to any other program that I was using, is to be able to use those noises in other programs. Now, Octane has a few basic noises, but they don't have a whole lot of control and there's only a few of them and you compare that to all of the maxon noises that redshift brings along and it's just no comparison redshift by far in a way is the winner for the procedural noises definitely something that you're going to use uh, quite a bit if you're doing any sort of uh, 3d work I, I use them all the time to uh, achieve different results if you look at the actual uh, background here the all of the crystals have a procedural noise applied to them. you can kind of see it a little bit especially on the uh, redshift logo here that being said this background is rendered with uh, octane it is a lower light scenario so like i said it's definitely uh to octane's um octane's benefit i guess to use it for low light scenarios it's way better in that regard uh so yeah that's kind of my comparison of the two, my kind of thoughts on the two and my experience with the two render engines. Uh, it's very, very good, both of them. Either one is a good choice, and I would definitely recommend when you're deciding what render engine to use, whether you want to throw in the other render engines, like uh, depending on your, your programs that you're using, whether it's Arnold or Corona or V-Ray, whatever it is that you're just trying to decide between, I would definitely at least throw one of these two into the mix because the between the price and the speed of the two with all that they offer i would definitely throw them into the mix they definitely have their own benefits and all like all render engines are going to have their own benefits but the price especially with these two you just can't beat especially if you're paying on a uh well in this in octane's case on a monthly basis but if you're paying um uh, yearly to get your, your renders there's no beating these two uh so anyways hopefully this helps you out like i said i'm gonna be covering this in depth more across my upcoming videos i plan to compare the two in real scenarios where i have uh scenes that i've been working on and i'm going to render them each in octane and redshift try to get the closest result that i can and compare the two that way it's kind of an ongoing thing with the development between octane and redshift as they get updated and as uh, time moves on you'll be able to see which one performs better between the different situations whether they're using you know volumes or subsurface scattering or whatever it may be uh, you'll be able to see kind of which one performs the best in those situations so Anyways, hopefully this helped you out and inf was informative for you. I have a bunch of other videos on my on my channel for how to do stuff inside of uh, Houdini. I do have some stuff on Redshift already. I do have a little bit on Octane that I'm obviously going to be um, pushing more of that content out as well. And I do have some stuff on Cinema 4D as well. So if any of that stuff interests you, feel free to check out the other videos on my channel. But Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.